Hi everybody, this is Angel Arts, and I have a very special mini Let's Play for you. Uh, I normally don't do demos of games that often, mostly because I like to play through games completely blind, and I feel that if I end up playing the demo of a game first, I end up losing a little bit of about, obviously, the blindness. Um, obviously, things in the final product may change, but you know, there. Just wanted to give that explanation right out of the right out of the bat. But this is a very special case, um, mostly because of the uniqueness of this particular game and how it um, speaks very highly to me personally. Uh, I have to give a shout out to Fat Lazy Panda and Aikuchi, as well as Rachel, aka Witchwater. Uh, who is Halisair in my current Dragon Age tabletop campaign, they um, mentioned to me this game called El Det. It's on Kickstarter right now. I believe that the Kickstarter is running until July 17th, 2016. Um, and it has been... It has more than achieved. It's gone over its, you know, its uh, desired... Uh, backers, uh, the backing amount. Um, what is it about this game? You probably are asking if you've never heard of it. This is another visual novel. It's a video, it's a medieval visual novel that focuses on LGBT and people of color. And as a member of both the LGBT community and as a member of people of color, that is incredible to me because there, I feel like games in general, there is not nearly enough representation for the LGBT community. I mean, they definitely have been coming out lately, like <laughs> Speak of the Devil coming out on top, for example. And there isn't as much um, games out there that has, that focuses really that much on people of color. Of course, there's plenty of games that contain people of color, but the fact that this is a game that does that tries to focus on both, I think, is speaks volumes um, because it's just something that I feel is so unique and something that I really appreciate. Uh, so again, this is just a demo version. Um, one thing the creator Marcus has mentioned is that not only do you have the opportunity to go through this game. Um, and go through the hopefully is going to be an engaging story, there is an optional romance, an optional same gender romance that you can pursue throughout the story. Um, as And it's not supposed to be the main focus of the story, it's just like in the Bioware games where you can get a perfectly satisfying ending with specific characters without you know, pursuing a romance with them, which I think is awesome. Um, and I, I believe that a lot of these kind of games need more of that, where you don't necessarily have to pursue a relationship if you want to, and hopefully the plot, the main writing and the storyline, you know, holds, uh, holds itself up well enough that you still will have an amazing time, regardless of whether or not you decide to pursue a relationship. So. Let's go ahead and get started. I don't want to spend too much time blabbing, um, but let's go ahead and go through this this demo, and I'll share with you my my initial thoughts. And Marcus, if you're watching, um, hopefully um, this will help you to gather some data as to what a let's player one person's opinion is of this game and how it plays so far. And maybe who knows? Maybe it'll help. Uh, make your game even better when the finished product comes out. Okay, so press spacebar or click anywhere on the screen to predict per, to progress the story. Okay, uh, so, so right off the bat, I'm glad that that there are very clear directions on how to actually control this game. I mean, it's a visual novel game, but um, you know, it's it's good to have that added. It's good to have that uh, added feedback from the beginning because not this could be the very first visual novel story that you've played, for all you know. The triangle in the bottom right hand corner will indicate when text is ready to be, to be advanced. Thank you, that's a good thing to know. Throughout the demo, you will be presented with dialogue choices in which you determine what you do or say in particular moments. Awesome, 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 awesome. I hope 
there is a great representation of dialogue choices from the beginning because as you've seen me play in other visual novels, nothing irks me more than to have to wait 20 minutes before I, before I can actually give some feedback, before I can give like a dialogue option. So, so far, I'm happy. So we'll see how, how things go. Your decisions will affect how characters interact with you, including what they do and what they may or may not choose to tell you. Sweet, I love that. I hope, I, I'm so happy if this game is smart enough to know previous things that I've said and have those really matter as this relationship progresses, whether it be a platonic relationship or romantic. Now please enjoy the demo of El Det. So I know nothing about the plot. I know nothing about this besides the fact, besides everything I've just told you. That's all I know about this game. And so far, okay, I'm, I'm hearing bells. That's the bell. Adita, do you see anyone? Hmm. Adita. No, you can take it off now. Oh, she's pretty. Oh, wow, I love the art style of this game. This is beautiful. It's like watercolor. You close your eyes and take a deep breath. She's pretty. I like her dress. Oh, I love, I love her tattoo also. That's really awesome. And that's really intricate. I can't tell if that's a scale or what that's supposed to represent, but it's really cool. I was asked to lead the meditations today. They'll come looking for me soon. Oh, wow, our main character's handsome. Oh, man, he's got some, he's got some serious Flynn Rider thing going on that I'm really liking. I'm really liking our main character's look a lot. So kudos, brownie points to Marcus so far for, for making our character look is, in my opinion, strappingly handsome. All the more reason to do this quickly. Kunal, okay, so I think we've established that our, our protagonist's name is Kunal, which is fine. Which is fine. Some some of these types of games let you name your character. There might be a there might be a story reason why um, there might be story reason why his character has to have this name has to have the name Kunal. Um, but Marcus, if you're watching, um, if there really is no real story reason why um, you know the character has to be named Kunal. Obviously, you know, one thing you could do is have Kunal be the default and maybe give the player an option to change it if that makes sense in the narrative. Because I know, again, not knowing anything about this story, it, it's something to consider. There is no going back from this if you leave. We've been through this. I don't know what more to say. So um, one, one interesting thing I also note is that um, there is no name tag. There's no name that appears here uh, with Kunal, which is fine because instead of a name, in lieu of a name, you have the portrait of the character. So the portrait essentially replaces the name tag. I think that if that's kept consistent throughout the game, that's fine. Um, you know, it's just so there's no confusion. As long as, you know, it, 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 there's no mistakes because in programming this, it's possible for you to put up like, a portrait of someone and that person's not the actual person that's talking but hopefully you know if they're if they're going with this standard for the dialogue that will that will be kept you know that will be maintained and be consistent all throughout again so there's no confusion say you'll change your mind 16 years adita 16 years nearly my entire life and what has been gained? I can't do any magic, you know that. Every acolyte, every magister here has known all along. I'm tired of being here. So is this like the circle of magi? I'm tired of mages. <laughs> is he gonna become a Templar? You know, given the years we've been friends, you might have found the time to say you were tired of me. Oh, so she's a mage. I'd have left you alone. Don't do that. You know I don't mean you. Look. Not everyone is meant for this kind of life. If I've learned anything here, it's that. I'm not meant for it. You can't know that. Not if you leave now. Years of meditation, years of fasting, years of my sight, blacked out by that hood. 
This isn't what I want from my life. Leaving. Leaving is the only chance I have. Adita. Adita, could you at least look at me? I'm not trying to live your life for you. I just don't know about this. I've agreed to it. I'm packed, and we're here at the compass. So now, you haven't even told me where you're going, or what it is you're doing. Can you even explain to me what a Tomb Raider is supposed to be? Well, she's this really pretty girl. I think she goes by the name of Lara, and uh, she's had many different types of games. The most recent ones I heard are, are pretty cool, pretty realistic and all. Of course I can... Okay, they go into tombs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us a dialogue choice within the first five minutes of the game. That, that's a big giant check mark for me. Thank you, Marcus, thank you. They go into tombs and uh, it's simple. They're treasure seekers. They're made up just aroused to trick you into helping me leave. It's simple. They're treasure seekers. Is this life really so distasteful that you'd rather be, what, some kind of a pirate? Okay, so I, since I'm not a mage, I'm gonna go off and be all Tomb Raider-y. Now is probably the worst time to make me doubt, now is probably the worst time to make me doubt myself. It's too late to change my mind, Adita. Just let me do this. Does this, this raider, whoever he is, does he know? Kunal? He knows I've studied here. That's all he needed to know. And this is a school for mages. Kunal, that's what he thinks you are. Adita, I... What happens when you can't do the magic he's hired you to do? What will he do with you then? That's a, that's a good point, Kunal. Listen to the lady. He hasn't told me what he needs me to do. He... He could need me to identify an artifact or do a star reading. Just because he needs a mage doesn't mean he needs magic. Oh, oh, Kunal. Oh, oh, Kunal. <laughs> you're so adorable when you're in denial. So cute when you're in denial. <laughs> but you don't know, Kunal. You have no idea what you could be getting yourself into. I've made my decision. I've handled myself here. What's out there can't be any worse. I really love, I really love the facial expressions that they put on Kunal, like on, on, on his, the art. The art here is super strong. I'm very impressed by that. It's, it's again, it looks like each cell, each character, each scene is like a watercolor, beautiful watercolor painting. It's, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm already super impressed by it, by the look and feel of this game. I'm your best friend. Can you blame me for worrying about you? You don't need to worry about me. Just, please, take care of yourself. Oh, this is so theatrical, I love it. Are you okay? I'm fine. Really, I am. Now, I know you've never traveled this way before. It's important that you don't make any mistakes. Right, when I activate the compass, Close your eyes. So the compass is something that's supposed to make us travel, like teleport us somewhere, I'm guessing? Okay. Stay as still as you can. Got it. And last, stay focused. Teleportation can release a lot of residual magic if the traveler isn't powerful enough to direct the spell. And you're assuming that I... You were the one who asked me to come here and activate the runes for you. It's no different from meditation. Close your eyes, let the magic flow with your breath, then channel it through to the mind. Focus on the incantation, and you'll retain control. I love, I love how well the narrative, I, I'm seeing some a lot of strong writing because it's, it's, you know, trying to explain to you how this world works, how this universe works. For people who, of course, are totally unfamiliar with the story because they're playing it for the first time. So far, they're, they're doing a great job setting up the rules and some of the key elements that's involved with mages and the world and the universe. So I'm, I'm very pleased by that. Right, I'll, I'll do that. I'll miss you, Kunal. 
I'm activating the compass. I love this scene. Oh, wow, that's pretty. I love, oh, oh gosh, that's that's pretty. I like this. I, I really enjoy this scene because it really est establishes the relationship that you have with this character, that you have with the NPC. Um, it helps you to get really attached to her, um, which is very important to me because there's nothing, there's nothing worse than having a game, a visual novel, where you are thrown all of these characters get thrown into your face all at once. Like you're introduced to 20 characters within the first five minutes and it's hard for you to really grow an attachment or really to have an understanding about who these characters are. So, so far the pacing, the fact that they spend this much time on a character who's supposed to be a good friend of yours, they're able to establish with you who this person is, what your relationship is like, how they interact with each other, what, where they're at right now, and really gives you a chance to care for these characters. And that's something that I think many other visual novels tend to, tend to not do as well, because they, they, they want to try so hard to say, here's a character, and here's a character, and here's another character, and that's all fine and dandy, but it, it doesn't exude a, a method for you to really become invested into, I guess, the important characters, like, like this one. Right, so, eyes closed. And again, uh, so, so there's no portrait here, so I guess we have to assume that it's, it's her speaking because she's the only one who's visually on the screen and not Kunal. I don't know, I feel like for time, it might be helpful to have the name of the character here just, just so it's, it's easier for the person to follow because, I mean, they could, they could easily mistake, a, a player could easily mistake that this dialogue is being said by Kunal and not from not from her. So just just a little note that you know, d don't be too be careful with um, with omitting the the name tag just just for for clarity because that's not always a bad thing. Breathe in, channel the magic, focus on the incantation, focus on the I. I don't know the incantation. Okay, so I'm I'm getting confused. She doesn't know the incantation. Kunal doesn't know the incantation. I, I'm lost now. So, again, name tags would be really would be really nice for these dialogues, just because I, I'm I'm starting to second guess who's saying what right now. I don't know the. Oh, okay, so that was Kunal talking. I think I'm confused. Okay, Marcus. Take note of that. I, I'm, I'm already confused as to who was saying what during that little scene. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. Okay. Very cool. Huh. Okay. All right. Well. Fantastic. Okay. Um. I hear... Oh, there's a thud. Uh, hello? Oh, well, hello there, handsome. I, uh, <laughs> Kunal's all wet. <laughs> I have no problem with this. I have no problem with a wet protagonist. Not at all. I, what, what, wh where am I? Your entire body begins to tremble from the cold. Are you all right? What happened? Let's stand you up here. The man helps you to your feet. A shame the lake spoiled your entrance, friend. Excuse me for asking, but you are my mage, aren't you? Y yes, are you t t t Tariq? Indeed, I am Tariq. As for what happened, I had hoped you would be the one explaining. It was like nothing I've ever seen. The light from you, from your arrival, parted the clouds above. But when it faded, I saw you floating in the water. I pulled you out only moments ago. I... I don't remember. I suppose you will want to dry yourself off. Shall I back away? Do you need much space? P pardon? After what I've just seen? Surely you can use magic to dry yourself. As a frigid gust wafts across the valley, you double over in a renewed fit of shivers. This soon, one minute outside of the college walls and I'm already being called on to use magic. 
a drying spell. Of course there are drying spells. Children can perform drying spells. But I... I can't let him know that I can't. <laughs> oh gods, what do I say? A drying spell from a mage of my caliber. I might set this entire forest ablaze, despite the snow better to dry off a non-magical way. Well, truthfully, I'm not much of a mage, or really a mage at all. People all my life have told me they expected great things from me, but the moment I got into school, all that ended up all that ended, and for nearly my entire life, I have been the biggest disappointment my family ever could have anticipated, and it's a wonder they haven't demanded that I drop the family name in order to retain their pristine reputation. Wow, that's a big wall of text. So, so, there's, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if, I, I don't necessarily want to critique this, because, because, of course, one might say, hey, maybe it's better to paraphrase you know, to paraphrase what the response is instead of just writing out everything. But part of me also gets annoyed when when the, the, the dialogue choices are paraphrased so that you don't actually know exactly what you say. And then when the person actually says it, you're like, wait, I didn't mean to say that, or I didn't expect that person to say that. So I'm kind of torn because yes, there's a lot of text to read, but I feel like for me personally, I care more that I know exactly what I'm going to say instead of having to guess based on a guess based on um, a paraphrase. And I'm sure Marcus has considered this too, or the, the writers or designers have thought about this. It's something to take in consideration whether you want to go with paraphrasing or go with what you have here. I'm fine with the wall of text personally, but I know that that can get on other people's nerves. So again, there's each each method has its pros and cons and i haven't seen anyone do a perfect way to handle this really so anyway just to get to what my actual choice will be i would like to play my character as pretty i'm i'm going the paragon route right now i'd like to think of my character as pretty truthful but maybe i should maybe i should specifically you know what i think i think because with this demo i'm going to pick the opposite i'm going to pick the choices that i don't plan on actually actually picking in my quote-unquote canon playthrough so i feel like when i actually play the game i'm gonna be truthful so for the demo i'm gonna lie and just see what happens <laughs> oh a drying spell from a mage of my caliber i might set this entire forest ablaze despite the snow better to dry off the non-magical way you've been getting shivering too much to say anything clearly <laughs> or maybe not hmm well there's no way around it You'll have to take your clothes off. <laughs> okay, we just went there. <laughs> what? And forgive me for assuming earlier that magic handled such mundane tasks. Surely it's reserved for much greater deeds. Oh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble, man. But regardless, we can't have you freezing in those wet robes, my friend. Please, take them off. I'll give you some of my own things to wear until we return to camp. You, 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 you're, you're kidding, kidding. Uh, I don't think he's kidding, Kamal. He knows what he wants. He, <laughs> Tariq, I like you, because you know what you want, and you go for it. <laughs> I think you'll find that modesty only holds so long as you still have goods to be modest about. Oh, snap. Are, are you talking about m my... my <laughs> There's no one here to see, and I'll go elsewhere while you change. Your jaw aches from the strain of keeping it still enough to speak clearly. If you think it'll help, you try to pull the ties loose on your robes, but your fingers are stiff and uncooperative from the cold. Yeah, Tariq, I think you might need to help me. You want to help and clothe me? Though if you've already gone numb, you might have some trouble managing it on your own. Uh... You know what? Just for funsies, allow Tariq to help you undress. You have a point. I know that... I probably will pick this. I'll probably pick this anyway in my canon, but I just kind of want to see where this goes. This is, this playthrough is just for funsies, so allow Tariq to help you address. You, you have a point. Let me just... Are they going to be... Are they going to actually show him? Here, dry off with this. He unfurls his... He, he doesn't just remove his headscarf. He unfurls his headscarf and hands it to you. There's a difference, ladies and gentlemen. As you dry your hair with Tariq's scarf, he walks behind you. Oh, oh, Kunal, oh my, Kunal, well, and I didn't realize Tariq had dreads, that's pretty, Kunal, can the camera guy, can you, can you, can you like pan back down, I like, I didn't quite, I didn't quite catch that, can we, can we, 
Can we? Oh, 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 that's right. I can. Ah, cool controls. I get to. I get to. Cool, cool. Okay, awesome. Anyway, <laughs> enough with objectifying ourselves. <laughs> Tariq slides his hand underneath the soaked robes, clinging to your shoulders, and eases it down, bearing your torso to the open air. To your surprise, you find that you feel less cold already, or perhaps you've ceased being able to feel much of anything. <laughs> you only distantly notice that Tariq has already begun undoing the skirt tied around your hips. He takes the cloth into his hands and wrings what water he can from it before setting it onto the snow. He removes his cloak, tunic, and thick linen skirt and places them on the ground beside you. Well, I can't believe this is happening. Snow begins to drift down across the valley. Oh, Kai Tariq, that's, that's a cool outfit. Ah, that's better, isn't it? You notice that Tariq hasn't left much for himself to wear. Won't you be c cold? So long as we stay ahead of the storm, I'll be fine. Though, let's give it no chances of catching us, agreed? The storm. It's this way, come on. Uh, okay, uh, okay, Tariq. Let's, 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 let's keep going. Nearly blind from the furious snow gusting around, you make out the sight of what happens to what appears to be. You're camping inside a cave? You're forced to shout, you're forced to shout to be heard. You're forced to shout to be heard over the howling wind. I don't presume to know what a mage would prefer. I love the snow that's on his hair. It's a great touch. The animation of this is, again, super impressive. So far, I'm, I'm really, really impressed by this. But I'm a man who has grown accustomed to having all his toes and fingers intact, a luxury not afforded by remaining outside in freezing weather. So if we are alike in mind, you'll join me inside. You follow Tariq into the cave. He gestures for you to sit down on a blanket opposite to a crackling fire. It appears my sister is asleep. And the Merc isn't here either, though I doubt he'll want to stay out in that storm much longer. Tariq walks beside the fire and lays your wet robes out to dry before sitting down. Comfortable enough? Better than staying outside. I had a feeling you wouldn't mind the cave for long. Kunal, there is something you should know. Uh, wh what is it? The last member of our party, he is Elvin. I know enough of the history of your people to be aware of, well, the possibility of problems. Now, I'm really, ex really intrigued to find out how elves are treated, how their race is handled in this setting. Is it like, is it like Dragon Age? Is it like Tolkien, where they're, you know, higher races, where they're, they have the superiority complex? I, I'm curious about that. What is what is the stigma, if any, of elves? Is there a stigma with elves? It seems like there's something going on with them. Um, at least as far as humans are concerned. But I let him know before we left for the mountains that there would be a mage among us. He did not object, so there may be nothing to worry about. Ah, you're back. You look back towards the entrance to the cave and see the man Tariq mentioned earlier. Lucky that you weren't too far from here when the storm hit. Kunal, meet Farron. Farron, Kunal. Wow, he's handsome too. He's a bit of added protection I've decided to bring along this time. I'm not well known for being overly cautious, but when one has the chance to hire an elven mercenary, why not do it? In truth, I was hoping to hear a story or two from his past employments, but, well, he doesn't talk much. Regardless, it seems at least you'll have quite a tale to take home with you. But don't worry, despite what happened earlier, I think your robes are thin enough to be... Out of the corner of your eye, you notice that Faron has already shrugged off his thick fur coat and has just started pulling off another layer. <laughs> uh, let's take a sneaky peek. Just Again, this is just for funsies, guys. Take a sneaky peek at Faron. Turning your head slightly to get a better look at the elven man, you watch as he strips off his tunic. I mean, what did Tariq say about the goods? He was talking about the goods earlier, so, you know, why not Why not follow the man's advice? Oh, that, the cameraman's panning up. Well, well, well. Okay. Kunal? <laughs> Look at Farron. He's like giving us that. He's giving us the, the, the glance up at us. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, what, what were you saying? 
I asked if you thought you might want to borrow some extra clothes when we set off tomorrow. Can I, can I borrow that guy's clothes? <laughs> Next. <laughs> no reason. Oh, uh, I might. Thanks. Of course. <laughs> a mercenary. Why would we need a mercenary with us? <laughs> Uh, just in case the uh, the mage isn't enough, Kumnal, have you ever have you thought of that? Uh, Tariq, hmm. What sort of things might we encounter that would uh, require a mercenary? Protection from my own optimism, perhaps. I've made the mistake of being kind a few too many a few times too many. This kind of work. Do you know what they say about it? About people like me? You shake your head. No. They say we should be hung drowned, burned, or skinned alive, among other equally thrilling activities. Raiding a tomb, they say, is despicable, an affront to the gods and to the dead, and other nonsense. Truthfully, I'm of a mind that the dead have no need for jewels, nor I think to the gods, but armed protection serves me well, given that most would rather see me dead than enter their markets with my cursed wares. To my knowledge, no tomb has ever held anything blessed by a god, let alone something cursed by one. Nevertheless, the stigma against my work has proved troublesome at times. Oh, I, I see. But the superstitious are only a small consideration. I have a greater need to protect against the ones I hire to assist my sister and I on our raids. What uh, do you mean by that? Suffice it to say, if someone has no fear of the gods, they have no fear of me. Those situations can become complicated, especially when treasure is involved. I've had swords held to my neck on more than one occasion. The worst I had to fear at college were paper cuts. You gulp. Take it from me, it isn't possible to be paying a so-called honest man for dishonest work. It took me years to learn that lesson. My own fault, thinking that there might be someone worth trusting in the world. Oh gods, does he know? Is he giving me a chance to confess? Wishful thinking. It tends to cause one undue trouble too often to hold on to it, as does well idiocy. I'd like to think I've rid myself of both. But nevertheless, there do come times when even I can't get up eye on my own. You're here as a testament to that. Though, uh, you're, ahem, <clears throat> quite a sight nicer than most of the assistants I tend to bring along with me. Ah, oh, there's, there, there goes Tariq. There he goes with the flirt. You're taken aback by the sudden shift in tone of Tariq's voice. Something about your eyes. There's a softness there that's, well, reassuring. Perhaps the extra protection won't be necessary. <laughs> what he's trying to say is, maybe you maybe you don't need those clothes after all. Do you want to give them back? Do you want to, do you want to give them back? Tariq smiles at you. I, you're torn between Tariq's compliments and the second implication of his words. Even if he does trust me, or well, trust me for now, if he's brought in fair on, on my account, I suppose that does make sense. An elf to counter a mage. Even if I could do any magic, elves can't be harmed by it. Oh, interesting. Elves are immune to magic? Even so, all of this talk of trust, I can't help but think. What happens when you can't do the magic he's hired you to do? What will he do with you then? Adita, something just occurred to me. Tariq's voice snaps you out of your anxious and musings. It may very well be that Farron simply doesn't understand me. I'm not one to boast, but I'm quite a hand at languages. I even recognize yours when you've only said a few words. Truthfully, I was rather relieved when you spoke in a tongue that I could understand quite readily. Surprised, too, I'd have thought you'd use your people's language. But it's no matter. If I recall correctly, elven and mage language are quite similar. Okay, so mages have their own language. That's what I was thinking. Yes, uh, that's true. Perhaps you could try your hand at talking with him. Okay. What does it matter if the languages are similar if I can speak barely any of my own people's language? Perhaps I'll explain, perhaps I'll explain that to Farah. If he only understands Elvish, he won't be able to tell Tariq I can't really speak it. Tariq won't be suspicious, at least not for now. I'll see what I can do. You turn to face Farron. Excellent. I'm sure you'll be able to ma- Oh, oh my. Fair. Oh, gosh, Farron. Farron was waiting. Wait, he was waiting for us to turn that way. Okay. You take a deep breath. <laughs> but what if he does understand more than just Elvish? I hardly know anything. It'd be worse than an infant grasping for their first words. He might think I'm making fun of him. Perhaps I shouldn't. 
But if I back out now, Tariq might suspect me. I'd have to think up an excuse. Gods, so I don't know. Uh, make up an excuse. Explain to fair in your limited aggressive language. Proceed. I'm gonna have fun and say make up an excuse. Tariq, actually, among the mages, a group to which I belong, we are, we are only allowed to use our language among ourselves, not with uh, the common pe- Oh gosh, the common pe- Oh, you just had to- you, Now he's done it. The moment the words leave your mouth, your heart sinks. Common people? Really? See, psh, psh, could I have picked anything more patronizing to call them? So I take it you're a college mage. Oh, sorry, it's the woman. Ahem, <clears throat> sorry. So I take it you're the college mage. The one Tariq has been calling the answer to his prayers. The previously sleeping woman stares at you with a strange intensity. I... Uh, I, I do tend to have that effect on people. Is that right? The tone of her voice strikes you as sounding a little less than friendly. One last introduction, I think, now that she's awake. Kunal, this is Kahina, my sister. I love all these names. These names are so, are so beautiful. Kahina, this is Kunal, our one and only genuine college mate. Why did he, why did he have to accentuate that? Your heart thuds sickly from his emphasis on the word genuine. Gods, no. He must have figured me out. Why else say genuine? Who says genuine? Seriously. You realize that Tariq is looking at you with a slight concern. Is everything nice to meet you? You notice that Kahina hasn't looked away. Her eyes seem to be appraising you. Mm. Tariq? Why is the mage wearing your clothes? You gulp. Unprepared for the weather? No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't my fault. What happened? It was during his arrival, which was certainly impressive until, well, I had to rescue him from the lake, but no harm done, and then you took off his clothes and you found something even more impressive. Isn't that right, Tariq? A lake? You mean you fell in somehow? Uh, shouldn't mages be able to foresee mistakes like these? Ma mages can't see the future. I've said nothing of divining the future. Surely you have your spells, your incantations, all prepared with a delicate hand. One without magic, one such as myself. Surely I could only believe that one wielding such gifts would take great care in their usage. That to do otherwise could mean their end, or the end of anyone unfortunate enough to share their company. What would one make of a maid such as that? Could they even be called a mage? I it was, it was just a mistake. You clench your fists to steady your shaking hands. I, I'm really loving, I'm really loving our character. They, they're really doing a great job of having Kunal not be a one note. I, 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 again, I get very tiresome when you have these characters that are so, your protagonists that are so bland. Kunal clearly has a very charming personality and a very likable personality and a relatable personality. I love that um, because I just feel like so many of the other characters are too much of a blank slate. So of the other protagonists I've had in visual novels are too much of a blank slate. So again, major kudos. Even so, falling into a frozen lake, does that not feel inauspicious to you, brother? Kahina, it's not too late to call this off, you know. We're calling nothing off. Kunal, perhaps now it's time I let you know why I've asked you here. Your heart, your heart pounds furiously in your chest. You begin to feel lightheaded. I don't even know where here is. I'm not without reason for asking you in the dark. You must understand, I've been operating long enough to know that in my line of work, letting someone know the location of your tomb before you've... I'm starting to doze off. You begin to feel faint. Don't... Don't pass out. Cracked it is... Tracked it is as good as, as giving away its treasures. That's why you're here. You're going to be... Oh my. What's going on? Wow, okay. That was a cool effect. I love all of the little effects that they're making visually to really get you in, like sucked into the story. Perhaps it's better to tell you tomorrow. No, it's fine. I, I just dozed off. I'm, I'm fine. Tomorrow, my friend. Rest well. We'll be setting out in the morning. At Tariq's behest, you shut your eyes and lie back. You begin to drift off, but despite your weariness, you can't shake off the fear of the day to come. What have I gotten myself into? Adita. 
What am I? What am I supposed to... To... You are overtaken by sleep. Wow. So far, I'm, 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 I'm really engaged. I'm... Unlike many of the other visual novels I've, I've, I've played, I genuinely want to keep really, really... I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for the next thing to happen. You wake to the sound of distant voices and the muffled crunch of footsteps in snow. We'll wait until he wakes up on his own. If he was any of your other higher-ons, you would have dragged him out of there by now. You rub your eyes and take uh, eyes and dry uh, and try to take in the dimly lit cave. Well, Kahina, I, I've got again. I've got the Flynn Rider thing going. Some equipment still lies against the far wall, but everyone seems to have left the cave already. You get up and walk over to where Tariq left your robes to dry. You recall Tariq welcoming you to continue using your borrowed clothes if you wished. Change back into your robes, continue wearing Tariq's clothing. Ah, uh, let's just change back into our robes. Um, or continue wearing Tariq's clothing. Uh, I feel like I would actually change back into my clothes in the my canon playthrough, so just for funsies, I'll continue wearing Tariq's clothing. You fold up your robes and put them onto your pack before heading outside. You blink in the bright sunlight, but can see that your companions, companions have already gathered outside. Ah, good morning, friend. I hope you slept well. Uh... As well as one can sleep inside a cave. Well, at least my clothes were to your liking. But apologies, friend. I couldn't call this life of glamour surely not... I couldn't call this a life of glamour surely not to a mage such as you. Though, break open a big enough tomb and my back might never need, in, need endure another cave floor again. Regardless. Tariq walks past you and towards the cave. So far, the elf guy hasn't said anything yet. I've all need to pack up some equipment we may need, and we'll be off. No one's been faulted for preparing too much, eh? Tariq walks back into the cave. This is a really long demo, I've noticed. So... You hear snow crunching behind you. Faron, do you mind if I speak to the mage in private for a moment? You recognize the voices belonging to Kahina. Her emphasis on mage makes her stomach churn. Faron says nothing, but walks away from you and Kahina. Uh... What was it you wanted? My brother may be fooled, but he has never met a mage, Kunal. I'm sure you are counting on that. And were I not here, it might have worked. Your heart begins to thud sickly in your chest. Uh-oh. What? I don't blame you. I know the reward my brother has promised compelled the lie. But it's gone too on too long. You are no mage. Uh, void. Or confess. I am a mage. I but but I I am a mage. <laughs> that didn't come out right. Ha! Huh. For a moment you nearly had me convinced, but alas, I retain my doubts. You feel sick from the rapid beating in your chest. Calm yourself, boy. I will pay you half the reward Tariq offered you if you confess yourself now. What? He will not harm for he will not harm for you telling the truth. He will not harm for you. He will not harm you for telling the truth. Okay. There's a, a, a typo. It happens. It happens. But you know, typo there. I'm sure they'll fix it before the before the game is is posted. He isn't that kind of person. Shame is the worst you'll have to endure when we leave these mountains. When we return to Karanta, I'll pay you. You can go on with your life, and we with ours. You heard the sound of approaching footsteps. He's coming back. Tell him the truth. If you wait, he'll find out on his own, and you'll be without his coin. And mine. So, are we prepared to... A moment, brother. Kunal has something to tell you. Of course, of course. Speak freely, friend. I, uh, I... So, I'm definitely gonna say this when I, in my canon. But just for funsies, I'm really excited. I'm just really excited. That's the enthusiasm I'm looking for. Let's waste no time then. Kahina's <laughs> giving us the snarky clam glare. Love it. Love it. Love it. Today has been a long time in planning, my friends. Kunal, I will explain your role in all this once we arrive at the site. Fair enough? You gulp. You can feel Kahina's eyes on you from the side, but keep your focus straight ahead on Tariq. You take a deep breath. That's fine. Excellent. This way. You walk for nearly three hours through the snow-covered landscape before you reach the site, a deep basin set between two mountains. As you reach the bottom, the roar of a waterfall echoes against the steep cliffs around you. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, that waterfall effect? That is beautiful animation there. I am impressed. For, for, for a visual novel 
Gosh, that's, this is really impressive. You find yourself exhausted and panting heavily from the journey. Despite the cool air of the mountains, your forehead is damp with sweat. Tariq, was there no closer place where we might have stayed? I've no doubt that there were many. But then why? Some precautions are worth their negatives, Kunal. Those who live as my sister and I would seize at every opportunity to rob us of our chance at the tomb. In the past, other groups have sent spies to follow our movements, observe and record where and when we traveled. But as I am aware, no one has discovered this place. You hear Kahina shift in the snow beside you. Distancing ourselves until the right time lessens the risk in that regard. And on that note, I don't want us standing out in the open any longer. Follow me. You walk along the ice towards the far side of the basin. As you draw near, you notice the divide in the rock face just behind the falls. Tariq leads you and the rest between the gap and deep into the car between the gap and deep into the dark cavern within. Oh boy. Oh wow. It's so dark. I love how they also darken the character portrait too. You hear Tariq chuckle softly in the darkness of the cavern. What did you expect we'd come here to find? The cave lined with burning torches? I no, I suppose that wouldn't make sense. Though in this instance. Mage lights. Is that what those are? I had wondered. Regardless. Tariq lights a torch and holds it out in the damp air of the cave. By the torchlight, you can see that the way forward lies beneath massive boulders and crumbling pillars wedged together overhead. Uh, is it, is it even safe to be in here? That pillar back there looks ready to fall. No, it isn't safe. That's not entirely reassuring. It wasn't meant to be. These tombs can be laid can be laid through with traps, pitfalls, collapsing ceilings, and even more dangers from the wear of old age upon the structure. Though, well, as you'll soon see, the nature of the entrance itself may have been the only deterrent the builders of this tomb set in place. Regardless, I need you on your toes, Kunal. You as well, Farron. I'm sure you're both capable, else I wouldn't have hired you, but you lack the experience of my sister and I. I don't say these things to discourage you. It would be a disservice to you to withhold knowledge of the dangers you may face. Honesty often keeps one alive a mile beneath the ground. Keep close to my sister and I, and not only will you walk away unscathed from this tomb, but you'll be weighed down with riches you couldn't imagine. Tariq turns and walks further into the cave, Kahina and Farron following behind. Trying to shake the thread of traps from your mind, you reach the end of the pillar-lined hallway. What? How is this possible? What do you make of this, Kunal? Something you've seen before, that's, that's, th I, I know that symbol, that's, that was, that was the, that, that was the tattoo, that's the tattoo. I, yeah, exactly, Adita, uh, what is your mark doing on this door? That is curious. Something the matter? Ooh, the plot thickens. You find yourself unable to respond. Kunal? He knows this as far as his rouse, he knows this as far as his rouse can play out. Kunal, are you okay? I... I can't open this. See, brother, what did I tell you? No, it's... This symbol, Tariq, it's a mage's sigil. These kinds of seals can only be undone by the magic of the mage to whom the sigil belongs. And this... I don't, under, I don't understand, Adita. Kunal, is there no other way? These sigils are a sort of primal magic, unless one understands their nature, such as the mage who wears the sigil, they can withstand nearly anything. They can withstand nearly anything magical. It would take an enormously powerful mage to overcome it. Well, then we're in luck, aren't we? What? Brother? He's telling you he can't do it. This talk of sigils is barely an excuse. Theron, you more than any other. You more than any other here would know whether or not someone was truly a mage. What say you? Oh. Uh, our elf friend isn't saying anything. Well. You weren't at the lake, Kahina. You didn't see what I saw. Oh, oh, well, yes. We, we, we know what you saw, Tariq. He. At Tariq's words, a sudden realization hits you. The lake. What had Adita said? Teleportation can release a lot of residual magic if the traveler isn't powerful enough to direct the spell. Residual magic. Perhaps I can... It doesn't matter what you saw. It, it doesn't matter what you saw. If he says he can't do it, he... I, I think I can do it. What? Yeah, residual magic from her. Residual magic from, from Adita. I... I can do it. Your heart begins to beat faster from a mixture of fear and excitement. This... 
This could work. If I get this door open, that's it. I'll be done with all this. I'll be free to live my life. I'll take the coin and put the college and everything else behind me. Excellent. The sooner you get that door open, the sooner you'll quell my sister's doubts about you. And if that's not enough motivation, well then, imagine the weight of all the coin in your pocket once we're finished here. You nod and take a deep breath. I'll need some space. Of course. You take one last look at the seal before sitting and assuming the meditative stance. You close your eyes and breathe in slowly. Ooh, nice effect. Channel the magic. If there's even any still clinging to me, you know from years of fruitless meditations that channeling requires a focused mind, but despite this, you make no attempt to stop the thoughts intruding on your concentration. Adita, was this you? Did you... Did you know someone that Tariq would ask me... Did you know somehow that Tariq would ask me to open the tomb? And so came here to remake the seal yourself, knowing I might be a bare traces of your magic? If anyone could overcome another made of seal, it would be you. If this was you... Thank you. This is very interesting. Okay. Ten minutes pass in silence. This has to work. There's no alternatives. Please, please open. Please open. Here's an idea, brother. Every minute more we wait, you can pay back my lost time with a silver piece. And when, and when Kunal opens the door for us, you'll give him half of your share of whatever we find inside. Oh, wow. Fair enough. Only I think the elf deserves silver for his own time spent standing here. Add him to my side of the wager. Should Kanal open the door, he can take the rest of my share. Should he fail, you'll, want, you'll match him for the coin you owe me. These things take time. Take your time, Kunal. We know you can do this. Yes, do take your time. <sighs> Half an hour passes. Then an hour. You fight to suppress the dread building up within you, but you cannot ignore the fact that this... this isn't going to work. Of course it's not. Why did I believe that this, all, this of all things was my way out of the college? I'm a fool, Adida. I should have stayed. I should have... Kunal, did you... What? Oh. Oh. Nice. What? I did it. I did it! Oh. Uh... Uh-oh. Did we just open Pandora's box? <gasps> da 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 da! A dark room. Great. Why do I feel like F F Freddy Fazbear is gonna jump out at me and scream in my face? Kunal, you've done it! What's an hour spent waiting when the reward might be the find of a lifetime? Now then, inside everyone and stay close. Even I've never raided a tomb sealed by magic. You may very well end up being our expert moving forward, Kunal. Haha, <laughs> thank you, Tariq. Tariq winks at you before turning and heading into the tomb. Thank you, Adida. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, I knew of this place for years, and for years I sought to find a mage to get me inside. The feeling of finally walking within these walls is difficult to express. Thank you, Kunal. The air of the tomb is damp and cool, but to your dismay, it's even darker here than it was before. The resting dead have little need for light. Hmm? What's that up there, I wonder? Another mage light. Oh. Ah. Kunal, are you doing this? Well, no, actually. Not just me. It's all of us. Magic has a sort of life to it, like a living energy. And mage light is able to sense the presence of other life by glowing. It's like they're greeting you. Though, it must have been some time since anyone has entered this place. Normally it's, well, faster. Fascinating. Oh, see, Kunal at least has knowledge. If you go. Even though he might not be able to cast magic, he has knowledge. Amazing. Truly, truly amazing. Tariq walks forward and turns to face the group. My friends, I'll be brief, even as I must admit I can hardly stop myself from setting forth immediately. It appears the way behind me can't be traveled. But don't worry, I am not one to give up so easily. We'll devise something to get us across. But for now, we're left with two paths. One to the left, and one to the right. It seems practical to me to split our party in half. Kunal, Farron, one of you will go, either myself or my sister, with either myself or my sister. You'll each have an experienced raider at your side, should anything, uh, disagreeable occur. And Kunal, since you got us inside, I'll let you choose who you'd like to follow. 
Oh, uh, I... I can't go with Farron? I can't go with the elf? <laughs> well, as I said before, this appears to be a mage's tomb, so you may very well be our expert. In that regard, any party that explored this place without you would be disadvantaged. Though with my sister and I together, well, we're no amateurs, so I see no reason why you can't go with... No! Brother, the maid should go with you. He's free to make his own decisions, Kahina. Can you hear yourself? Tariq, your excitement is overruling your common sense. If entering the tomb took the power of a mage, then what of the traps we might find? By that logic, we should all go together. I... I can go on my own. Who's lacking their common sense now? Tariq! Okay, okay. You're right, but unless you're opposed to Kunal going with you, either one of us would suffice. Kunal? Uh, I'll go with Kahina. I'll go with Kahina. I, uh, I'll suppose I'll go with Kahina. Uh, actually, I might end up going with... I might go with Farron. I might actually go with Farron in the real in the real thing. So I'll say I'll go with Kahina. Kahina lights a torch of her own. You are in excellent hands, Kunal. Kahina has rated even longer than I have. Has rated even longer than I have. You'll be learning from a true professional. Let's go, mage. You walk in silence behind Kahina for some time before she stops and turns around to face you. It seems I've misjudged you. The only mage I have ever met. Kahina appears to be willing herself to speak. His very presence made the air around him tremble. But perhaps even the meek claim a share of that power, even if they appear otherwise. I apologize, Kunal, but I must ask you. Your arrival, how did you come by it? Emboldened by the success of your precious of your previous lies, you decide to hold to your story. I transported myself. I see. I am curious. Are you able to transport others in addition to yourself? Yes, it's possible. I am surprised you chose to come with me, Kunal. I thought you and my brother had become fast friends. Or am I mistaken? I... you... Um... Uh, I do consider us friends. I do consider us to be friends. I just thought that if we went with... if I went with you, we could... I'm happy to hear that. However, I feel no such bond between us. Give my brother the gift of your company. I have no need of it for it, Kunal. Oh, okay. Well, snap. Kahina walks off alone down the hall, leaving you behind. She's like, whatevs, go, do, if you friend zone my brother, whatevs. You turn and begin walking back towards the atrium. You aren't sure of how long it takes, but after some time you hear a distant voice echoing through the hallway. Tariq? Tariq, is that you? You wait for a response. Um. Kunal? You let out a sigh of relief and hurry along the hallway towards Tariq's voice. Oh. Kunal, what are you doing here? Where is my sister? Is everything okay? She she told me she didn't want to go through the she didn't want to go through the tomb with me. She left. I she she left, really? You nod. Are you okay? Yes, of course. Let's keep going. Uh Tariq doesn't care that her sister's alright. Tariq turns and walks down the hall, leaving you alone. What's going on here? Hmm. You proceed through a series of empty hallways before reaching a set of stone tr steps. Tariq remains silent for some time. His expression lacks the excitement and enthusiasm you've grown used to seeing. You, Tariq, and Farron make your way down, the and down and emerge into a wide open chamber. Calm water gently laps against a stone path extending into the center of the room. You follow the path forward towards the ruins. The sight of the structure before you makes a chill run down your spine. You can't explain why, but an overwhelming sense of dread overcomes you. However, the ruins seem to have the opposite effect on Tariq. Now what could do we have here? You squint at the rubble. What do you think this is, Tariq? Hmm. Tariq holds the torch forward. What is this place? It's creepy. He takes a step back and looks upwards. This is the bottom of the atrium. I think we've just found where the path to the third door wound up. Let's see. Well, despite being destroyed, at least whatever this used to be is accessible. Hope you're not afraid of getting your hands dirty, Kunal. Again, as I said earlier, it's not that I doubt you, but this work can be challenging to say the least. I'm going to take a look at those rings. Hopefully we've just made our first find. Kunal, could you hold the torch? 
Sure. You turn around to take the torch from Tariq. What the? What's with all the dramatic shaking? Uh, um. Oh. What happened? What's going on? The mage lights are turning red. Why are they turning red? Red's normally bad, right? You feel both weightless and impossibly heavy all at once. The darkness surrounding you presses in on all sides, forcing the breath from your lungs. You struggle in vain to cry out, but just as suddenly as it began... Oh my, what's going on here? You gasp and stumble forward. What? Where... where am I? Tariq? Red... red mage light. Your skin crawls beneath the dim red glow cast across the chamber. Is this like red lyrium? <gasps> There's blue mage light, then red lage mage light. Is that like red lyrium? This, this feels so wrong. What's, what's that sound? You slowly turn around towards the source of the sound. Oh no, it's the idol. It's the red lyrium idol. Don't touch it, Kunal. Don't touch it. You feel the air around you hum and crack with energy. You're going to turn into a red templar. Don't do it. Don't, don't, no. What is that? Some sort of altar? Wait, this is... this is the same place as before... as, as before? Oh, oh my. Oh, oh my. This is probably bad. I'm, I'm guessing it's bad. Bad, 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 bad. Oh, oh, oh! Again, I'm very imp impressed by all of the animations, the chock full of animations this game has. This visual, visual novel has. H hello Your voice trembles out of fear. Your heart thuds in your chest. You feel an intense warmth radiating out in front of you. Is... Is someone there? Gods, what is happening? Where am I? Uh, you still stand amongst... You still stand among your companions. A low voice reverberates in darkness. Your body freezes in fear. Yes, among your companions. Only you are a miss in time. With every word, the voice seems to be getting closer and closer. You try to take a step backwards, but you are unable to move. Who, who's there? There, it's Corypheus. You, oh my gosh! Your heart races wildly. Oh my gosh! What the heck is that? Who is that? Is it Goro? It's Goro from 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 Mortal Kombat. Who, who are you? What's going on? I've been many things to you, Kanal. Just as you've worn many faces, held many names. Only you cannot remember the others. What? What do you mean? For now, it is yet too soon to know. To speak of myself, it would be a judgment premature. Not unfair to myself, but to you, Kunal. You and I, we have been tied for so long. You try to steady your shaking voice. Ha, how do you know my n name? Who are you? You to know me. I would bid you ask yourself, who are you now? Who do you wish to become? I... I don't understand. Your body warms but a drop of mage's blood. Yet you are a mage all the same. As were all who have drawn upon my spirit, and in so doing, giving me new forms. Flesh tinged with cunning, fear, hope, desire, for power or for pleasure. Destinies I can grant you, should you wish it. But all- Oh my gosh, it is Goro! <gasps> but all that lies ahead, you asked only of me. Your eyes widen in shock and fear. When last we met, you knew me as Eldet. Oh. Goodbye, Kunal. Rest assured, we'll be together soon. Oh, Eldet. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Is this going to end in a cliffhanger? The tomb begins to tremble, cracks appearing in the walls and floor. Theron! Sling him over your shoulder if you have to. We can't stay here. Suddenly you feel yourself being lifted off the floor, the shock breaking you out of your daze. W wait, what? Theron half pushes, half carries you, carries you towards the staircase. The three of you run through the collapsing tomb, dodging falling pieces from of stone. Stodging falling stones from above and leaping across gaps where the floor was fallen away. What was that back there? I I don't know. Wait, were you two there? Did you did you see it too? All I saw was you standing still while the tomb was coming down around us. 
Had we stayed any longer... Tariq, I... I don't know what happened, but... I was beside you and Faron, and then... I don't know. There was... Something. I, I don't know what or who it was. It's called Eldet. The mage lights, they were red, and you both were gone, and... It called itself Eldet. It said it knew me. You're not making any sense, Kunal. Tariq, I... Forget it. We've nearly made it out. They didn't see it. They weren't there. Panting heavily, you finally stumble back into the atrium, now a crumbling ruin. Just as you reach the entrance, you're stopped by... Kahina! We can't stay here, sister. The place is... I'm so sorry, brother. What? Kahina! Tariq takes a step towards Kahina. I love you, Tariq. Oh, is she... Is she... Sacrificing herself somehow? What? Oh. Kahina! You stare at the closed entrance gate. What is she... Kahina's a mage? Sister. She was a mage all along? Open the door! What? Kunal, you have to open the door. I... It's our only chance. Your heart pounds in your chest. You take one final look at the gate before assuming the meditative position, but that's her symbol. Close your eyes. Kahina can't be a mage. She... She has no sigil. Tariq surely would have known. Let the magic flow with your breath. And before, to where or to when was I taken? Then channel it through to the mind. Oh, Goro. Eldet. Who was Eldet? What was Eldet? The curiouser and curiouser, considering how he's named after the game. We'll be together soon. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow, look at the sigil. <gasps> oh. Oh, Kunal has a sigil. He's awakened, like Sailor Saturn. Oh, my. So he is a mage. He just hasn't gone through puberty yet. Uh, okay, well, there you go. Oh, oh. Oh, that's a cliffhanger, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for playing the demo of the mission. Oh, beautifully well done. Oh, that's how you end the demo. That's how you get them asking for more. If the crowdfunding campaign for this project is successful, Eldet will be made into a full game. In the full version of the game, you'll continue from where the demo left off with Kahina, Tariq, and Farron's quest lines, as well as meet the other four love interests and begin their quest lines. These companions will take you across the sea among a band of pirate raiders lead you deep inside the most ancient tombs of the world, expose you to the magical cures of possession and lycanthropy. Oh, wow, I didn't know you would want to spoil all that, and involve you in the machinations of Karnata's largest thieves syndicate. Wow! All while aiding you in the quest to unravel the mystery of the being known as Goro, I mean Aldet. If you enjoyed the demo and want to see this project see, tell as many people as you can about it. Ask them to play it themselves. I need all the help I can get raising awareness to make the funding campaign a success. Oh, awesome. Marcus. To ask questions, find more game information, including information regarding the game's Kickstarter campaign, visit the Eldet development blog. And if you've been sold by the demo, consider donating to the campaign. Once more, thanks for playing. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, okay. So thoughts of... Thought, really quick thoughts of the game of the demo so far. I, I am super impressed. I this can easily turn into one of my favorites, if not favorite, um, favorite visual novels when it becomes a full game. I like the art style, the animations, the the, the dialogue choices. Um, it's 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 really cool and again just because it's a medieval setting that focuses on lgbt and people of color is really awesome that that is an amazingly amazing concept that i i think it's important for a game like this to exist to come to fruition and it and the good news is on kickstarter this is funded and it is continually being overfunded like there is i'm i'm so happy for marcus and the people who are involved all the people who are involved in this game because because they they deserve it. After playing through this demo, I 100% am supporting this, backing this. It's so well done. You can tell there's so much care 
to this game. Again, I had some few minor, you know, critiques about the game, uh, some suggestions to make it more, more, um, imp to improve it a little bit, but there's very little for me that I think that the game needs, that, that I need to touch this game. I think the only, the only thing that would make this game absolutely perfect is, of course, if they added um, voice acting. And I know that's tough, and I know that uses up a lot of resources, but I feel like if they continue being overfunded, Marcus, take in consideration, consider getting voice actors. I know that there's a lot of people that are on, you know, um, there's like, oh gosh, there, there's a voice acting, the Voice Actors Alliance, Marcus, if you don't, I'm, I'm, you might know this, but the Voice Actor Alliance are chock full of, of great talented people. Um, if you want to find voice actors for this game, I think that would be fantastic and that would add so much more dimension to this game. Um, but even if the game doesn't have voice acting, I think this is going to be a phenomenal, really cool adventure. And I'm just really excited. The way that the demo was set up, this is a really long demo. I'm, I'm not used to demos being that involved. I was surprised how much it went into. And it ended at a perfect spot, you know, to keep you wanting more, to a cliffhanger that made you want to see this game succeed. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this, please, please, please support it, even though it's already been funded. I, there's so many things that I'm sure that this game can be improved by by funding it even more, getting to the stretch goals, um, including more um, more in, more characters, more love interests, more romantic interests, which is never a bad thing. Having more options, never choices. Um, I think that again, a lot of the stretch goals have been met that allowed to have a lot more characters. I think that. There's a stretch goal. The last stretch goal I saw had like the ability to add six more characters to the original three that I think were available when this when this Kickstarter started. So so uh, you know I, I will put the the Kickstarter page link in the description of this video so you can check it out. Um, I, I definitely uh, I recommend uh, would recommend people playing this game and supporting this game. Um, it's just it's just it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. I love what it's trying to do and what it represents and and, the, and who it tries to represent. And I feel like this is a game that people, anyone, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether you're white or colored or, or whatever, I, I feel like this is a game that can be universally enjoyed by everybody. Um, and I hope that it does get universally enjoyed by everybody. So or, um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for, for joining me in this demo. And um, I will definitely let's play this game in full when it finally releases, whenever that ends up being. And Marcus, if you're watching, fantastic job, man. I, I'm really enjoying this a lot. Absolutely love this. Um, it, it would be super cool also if I could if I could interview you, Marcus, if you're watching this. I, I, I don't know. It'd be awesome if I could interview this and maybe promote your, your game in more. But, you know, just take that into consideration. So... Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, love yourselves and love each other.